Brothers. Praise God. We um we're gonna go ahead and go forward with our with our panel. Um if you got questions, um uh we need another mic. Uh, isn't there another cordless mic? Isn't there another cordless mic? Hmm? Okay. Yeah, we just passed the mics around here. So here here, Erica. So if you have a question, get the mic uh, so that the people on live can actually hear your questions. Amen. Um, is there anything that we're not talking about? Amen, somebody. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Oh, well, I'm not talking about. <laughs> no, nah, as, as a joke. That's a joke. <laughs> Amen, somebody. So um, um, we're going to get started. First, we'll let, let's let our, our panelists, our guests, introduce themselves. Go ahead, great man. Good morning, family. Good morning. Good morning, morning, morning grace and peace. I am uh, Maury Obadiah, uh, part of uh, Boom Atlanta, uh, by way of Houston, Texas. I've uh, been here about two weeks. Okay. Hallelujah. Peace and blessings, everybody. My name is um, Elder Eric Johnson. I'm with um, Boom Atlanta. Um, I've been a part of Boom um, since day one. So, um, but I've been... Um, uh, member in the body of Christ since a young and so I praise the most high for where I am and um, I praise uh, the heavenly father for bringing us amongst you hallelujah how you doing everybody uh, let me first start by saying you know I gotta turn on the bishop voice <laughs> <laughs> I cannot speak regular <laughs> but no I'm William Brown, uh, Bishop of Boom Church, uh, Believers of One Messiah, and uh, I'm just happy to be here, and uh, we're going to see what we're going to talk about today. Had an awesome time last night, and had an awesome time today. Uh, Pastor Holly gave a powerful word, so just uh, appreciative <laughs> to be here, so definitely have your questions ready, and we're ready to go. I'm uh, Elder Sebastian Holly of Unity Worship. I'm Elder Darnell Hayes of Unity Worship, seven years. <laughs> Woo! It's uh, since 2014. Yeah, it feel it feel like a long time, and it's great. I'm glad to be here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just glad to be here amongst an esteemed uh, group of uh, men of God. So we, we're going to get to it. Amen. Amen. So go ahead. Our first question, anybody? Nobody has any questions, so we're going to go ahead. <laughs> Come on, then, Tane. Don't be scared. First thing um, I would say, um, with, with no, becoming to know who we are as a people, the first thing you have to know is that there's a lot of things or misconceptions that you have to discern through, or or basically, and that's that's with any religion, yeah. So um, there there are truths um, 
in what we call Christianity, and there are lies. There are truths in what we call Hebrew Israelite, and there are lies. And so, just like we talked about earlier with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit reveals all things. So you have to trust on the Spirit to reveal all things, and it's being willing to learn and not to come to a place where you feel that you have arrived, but to let the Spirit deal with you piece by piece and tell it to reveal the things that we need to know as us being the people and what that means, the fullness of what that means. Because it is prophecy dealing with that, because a lot of people are like, well, okay, well, what's the importance of you knowing that you're a Hebrew when we're all saved in Christ, which is true. We're all saved in Christ no matter what um, color or creed or nation you come from, but the, the prophecies of the Bible is revolved around his people. And so it's just like, um, just like you have a covenant with somebody or a wife. Can't nobody come into your house if they deny your wife. Absolutely. So um, um, that's, that's what I would say. Just, just know that there is, there's lies and truths that come from both sides. Because even when I first came into knowing who I was, um, I mean, it was taught to me, you know, I had always had a notion that Christ was black. That was like a lot of us, like, we believe that, like, Christ was black, like, no matter what people said, like, but once I came to know the reasons why we went through what we went through or why people hate us as a people and why we at the lowest point we are now, these, this is the reason why. And this is what the Bible is speaking of. So you have to discern through all this stuff and find out what's real and what's not. So that's what I would say. Um, yeah, just let the Holy Spirit continue to deal with you and reveal the things little by little. But don't try and go too far, go off the hinges. Just, yeah, just be patient. <laughs> yeah, yeah, be patient. But he'll reveal what needs to be revealed in due time. Some things he revealed to pe certain people and some things he don't. So, yeah, it ain't for everybody to know everything. We all don't know it. That's why we call the body. Yeah, so we enlighten one another. But it all, com it all comes from the Holy Spirit. Amen. I mean, I would, I would second that. Um, when I came in, I came in uh, as a rebel. Um, I was more so like Paul. <laughs> I, I came in with the pharisaical mindset, uh, some things that I learned, and uh, it, it turned my heart cold, you know. And my wife, she was, um, you know, leaving uh, some, some things that she learned uh, in the church that she was in. And, you know, she, was, she had a little knowledge and things like that, but I was full-blown. You know, I came into this thing, and it was hate the white man, and, you know, we didn't been through too much, and, you know, we can't allow the white man to reign over us and just all of these type of uh, tyrannical ideas, you know, and things like that. But yet I proclaim Christ. But I wasn't examining the word with Christ in it. Everything that I was, I, I, it, it was scripture, but it was misinterpreted to me wrong. And my wife was like, no, nah, I, I feel you, but there's no love. There's no compassion. How, how can we hate? How can we hate? When, 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 when Hamashiach, Christ says to love, love your enemies, them that persecute, them that hate you, them that falsely accuse. Ain't we getting falsely accused as a people? That, that don't mean that jump out of the window, just completely ignore what's happening to us as a people. That don't mean, you know, shun and be like, you know what? No, but that means, you know, we got to conceptualize and begin to see the things that are happening and understand why they're happening to us. These things aren't happening to us for any old reason. Because we gave, we wanted Barabbas. If we say we're the Hebrews, we're the Israelites, we said give us Barabbas. We don't want him. We don't want him. They said, then like, like Bishop said, we went, even, we, went even, we went even further than that. What did we say? Put his blood where? On us. Started with us. And then after they say, put it on the children too. We're the children. So the same uh, uh, thing that happened to Christ. Him being persecuted, him being neglected, him being shunned, him being beaten. Who is it happening to? Look around. So what do we have to do to reverse that? We got to love. Because this is our portion as a people. But that means we still got to love. We can't hate. Because scripture tells us we can't match hate with hate. That's the only way we, the only way we can overcome hate is with what? All I say is keep your heart in love and follow Christ. Nothing's changed. Identity is here. Just like Paul, the apostles, every, they move. They move with the spirit. But you didn't see them moving like the Pharisees. 
even when you read um, Acts the 15, that what Pharisees who believed on Christ. They were with the elders. When you read what in the council in, in Acts the 15, they had the Ruach. Paul said that the, that the Ruach fell on us and them. That's the word. So you can have the spirit. You can move in the spirit of Christ and knowing who you are fully and not hate your brother. Okay, quickly. So the question that you asked was about us. Were you talking inclusive or were you just talking about us as boom? Okay. As, as Israelites. Can't answer that. Reason why, reason why that answer can't be asked is because we have too many belief systems. We have too many. <laughs> so I can only speak for us. Right? During the time of Christ, there were also others that didn't walk with them. They were doing their own thing. He said, let them do their thing. When the disciples had an issue with them not walking with them, he said, let them do their thing. As long as they're not speaking against. So you're inquiring about learning more and getting a more understanding. You first can't try to be a part of, of an Israelite congregation or community. You have to first make sure you know who he is. Because he's going to guide you to what community you need to be a part of. A lot of people mess up because the first thing they do is when they go watch a video <laughs> or somebody on YouTube mm. teaching scripture and saying, you the people of the book. You get excited and the first thing you do, you want to just go be a part. <laughs> That's not the way it should work. You first have to be a citizen of heaven before you can become a citizen in the earth. So in pursuit of that is because he was born in the earth as an Israelite. But he didn't he where he is in glory, he's not an Israelite. So in order to understand where you want to be part explaining this, I'll say this. We believe us as boom we believe that there's only one way to the Father, and that's through the Son. We believe in keeping Torah through the Son, not for salvation, but because of our salvation. Because of what he did for us, which causes us, and Pastor was preaching it earlier, what he did for us causes us to be obedient to his will. And most people are trying to do that, trying to get into the kingdom. So that's why they, they go back to the schoolmaster mm -hmm. and trying to mm -hmm. make sure, well, am I keeping this? Am I keeping this? It's so much stuff within this is that you can't keep because you ain't even in your own land. <laughs> the first thing you have to understand is, is knowing knowing. Not only who he is, but understanding the Torah and understanding the scriptures and understanding there's certain jurisdictions, certain things you can do, certain things you can't do. So now what you do is, because you got to know him, being an Israelite, now even in the things that you don't know, you're not penalized for it. Because his grace covers your ignorance. We're constantly growing every day trying to learn and every day we read these scriptures we're finding out more and more new things so what I want to say to you is is that pursue right but don't get frustrated because ultimately you're going to find yourself in a place of frustration and that's where you have to let go like, you know what I can't do this on my own even as an Israelite I, get, I used to get frustrated with hearing some of the doctrines some of the craziness. I used to say, hey, look, man, I, we talk all the time. If I'd known what I knew before I came into this, I would have stayed in the church. But here's the thing. Because there are certain teachings in the church that you would, that in Israel, I mean, that you would never hear in the church. Right. 
right? But here's the thing. I'm glad that he didn't tell me because I knew now that this was my assignment. And what I realized as I close here to pastor, to, to pastor is that my assignment ain't everybody's. Some people would never come into the reality that they're an Israelite. And you have to be fine with that. But for the ones who do, understand it's a great responsibility. So don't be so anxious to find out. Because it also comes with some sorrows and pains. Hallelujah. We, we can go to the next question. Easy answer. Easy question. Easy answer. What do you know about being an Israelite? Okay. What do you? Because you talk about transitioning, right? What do, as as you transition into, right? Because you're not leaving your faith. You're just discovering who you are from the practical carnal sense, right? So what do you know from the practical side that an Israelite is supposed to do? Follow God. Okay, what does that look like from your perspective? Okay, so most, most Israelites, when they first come in, the first thing they focus on is the Shabbat, is the Sabbath, right? That's, that's the first thing. Then they go to other things, right? So by you newly coming in, you and your family, and I'm pretty sure that's the thing, that's probably the one thing that you know is, okay, we're supposed to keep the Sabbath, right? And we, we could get it. I'm not going to even get into the details of that, right? But whatever you understand about that, it's a simple answer. You keep what you know until you grow. Here's the thing. I've been in this about fifth, close to 15 years. I'm still learning. You never arrive. There's a progression, but you start at the place that fit, that works for you and your family. Don't allow the pressures of trying to catch up. And to, preacher, just preach right. You, you can't do this of yourself. And when you try to, let me give you an example of what I, when I tried. Okay, I would, my wife would tell you, you better not get, you better not put your foot on the floor getting out the bed on the Sabbath. That's how serious I was. 
I'm in there checking to make sure they turn they turn the microwaves on. I was straight crazy, legalistic. One day, I remember when I came home, I told her, I say, if, now we was a part of, I was like the associate pastor, at, we were part of a, a, a multicultural church, white church, right? Had black people too. The founder was a white female. The senior pastor was a black man, right? I remember one day I came in after service, after service, we went home, and I told my wife, I said, you know white people ain't going to heaven, right? <laughs> no white people ain't going to make it in the kingdom. And my wife looked at me and she said, you better, you better restudy that. <laughs> Real talk. You better, you better restudy. Which one is this one? You better restudy that. And so the thing is, is that before all of Facebook and YouTube and all that stuff, none of y'all saw the maturation process. See, people see me now and they think, oh, they see you, they see me now and they think, oh, he just came out of nowhere. No, I went through a process. I think the most high for not allowing Facebook Live to be in existence because there's some stuff you can't get back. And here's the thing, here's the point. If you, can, if you don't trust the Holy Spirit, the Ruach, with your family, there are things that you're going to say and you're going to do that you won't get back. So don't drag them along through your process. Don't misdrag them along. Hey, listen, the things if you're studying, study behind the scenes, you and your husband, and whatever you know, you present that openly. But as you're studying other things, you take that behind the scenes. Don't let them see that because you'll throw stuff out there. The next thing you know, six months later, you got to come back and recant. And guess what happened? Then they start looking at your mama crazy. I'm not studying. I'm not following you. We done been around this thing. You done changed up too much. So this is simple. Just whatever you know, keep what you know. Acts 15. The council came to port with new converts. They say, listen, the new converts, they gave them like three things to follow. They, and then when, as you continue to read down, he said, for the Moses is preached throughout the city. There's synagogues and temples on, that on the Sabbath they're going to be teaching. Why are you trying to put all this weight on them to learn stuff all at this quick, fast pace one time when there's a temple right down the street. There's a synagogue open every single day. See, we think the temple was just open on the Shabbat. No, it was open seven days a week. That's why I get the tripping on brothers and my Sunday, Sunday worship. You don't even understand what Sunday worship is. <laughs> the temple was open on Sunday. But the, the, here's the thing. They didn't know nothing about Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. They knew about days on the first day, second day, the third day. So to them, there was no such day as Sunday works because the temple was open every single day. It's just that majority of the people gathered on the Shabbat. But if you was a businessman and you could, and you couldn't, of course you couldn't do it, travel on the Sabbath day's journey on the Shabbat. So if you missed the Shabbat, you went the next day to the temple. So listen, I just want to say this. Don't allow the pressure of knowing you an Israelite to cause you to put yourself in bondage. Don't allow that. And I'm so glad that you're asking this question, being new, because now you don't have to experience the things that most of us experience, that we had to detox out of. I thought you got something, Pastor. Look at you. Trigger oh, no, no, that's, that's powerful. <laughs> Everything you said is absolutely uh, powerful, very important to understand. Um, the best way for me to explain um, uh, is, is, is this reality. America has this perception of being a Christian nation, okay? The fault in that reality is that in bed with American Christianity is white superiority. Okay, this becomes really important to understand. What's in bed with that American Christianity is also nationalism. So this is why you see the conservatives 
quote unquote Republicans, uh, praise God, that's supposed to be conservative believers, right, with so much hate, hate speech, uh, not willing or available to deal with racism or any of these things because their ideology is shaped where they've taken what's sacred and mixed it with the perverted. Are, are you with me? That's important to understand. Uh, the only reason I bring that up because the emphasis emphasis is not on me and my truth for any attitude of superiority. It's to bring us back to or back from the deficit. You feel me? So a lot of times when I'm approaching young men in the street and are witnessing to them in different things, a lot of the struggle is that American Christianity is the white man's religion. So the thing I have to encourage the brothers with is, well, that's not your truth. Because this biblical idea of right relationship with God and covenant relationship with God is actually inherently yours before it was theirs. See, so now I'm dealing with a truth, right, to get them to the confidence of their identity in God so that we're not dealing with the inferiority of, of being African-American, right? Uh, and, and, and that this relationship with God is supposed to bring your identity up so you're no longer bound by the conditions of, 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 the, uh, of the development in this, in this system. And, it, and that becomes really important. See, my emphasis always has been more toward that practicality for the spiritual reality. But the, the, the main focus is that because you were born for a covenant relationship with God, then in, intimacy with God is supposed to be your priority above anything else. We here at Unity Worship, we've always speak, spoke this language, talked this conversation from day one. You feel me? But never highlighted it as the emphasis so that people wouldn't adopt attitudes of superiority because that was never the goal. Sis, y'all going to be all right. Y'all going to be all right. Y'all going to be all right. So good question. But y'all going to be all right. All right. Next question. Anybody got a question? Statement, question. Just um, going off of what Pastor had said, um, the great thing about that is that the the Heavenly Father has made our oppressors take on our book. That way, that He may make it manifest through us. So they can't bring out the truth of the of something that was first given to us. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. So he made it that way. So you, you what you gonna blame the father? Yeah, who who gonna do that? What? Yeah, so so the fact of him even making them take on our book but even teach it the wrong way is is showing the manifest of what he has spoken from the beginning. Right. So um yeah. You gotta you gotta realize every aspect of this book. You can't take a little bit here and a little bit there, everything. He said he make good and evil. But all things work out for the good for those who love him. Amen. You know, I find it funny. I love the slogan and the statement of this Bible is the white man book. <laughs> this Bible, the white man book, and they use this book to enslave you and you kings and queens and the black woman is God and and it's simple. How, how is this? How is this the white man book? And every, pretty much everything in the book black. Well, the the piece of it is very important to understand. Is initially there was a denial mm -hmm. of of scripture uh, to the slave. The justification for that was they're animals. You got to see how big this was in the mindset. Of, of the slave masters of the aver average um, uh, American at this particular time. Another piece you have to understand is that initially when they first started trying to introduce um, quote unquote Christianity to the slave um, and the whole goal of that was to make the slave more docile. Right. That was intentional. But when they first started trying to introduce uh, uh, quote unquote our Christianity to the slave, they used a more liturgical style or denomination, and the slaves rejected it. They were not interested in it at all. 
But then when the slaves were introduced to a more exuberant style, which at the time was your Methodist and your Baptist, right? Now, that's, that's huge because now we see more of a Pharisaic mindset from these cultures. But initially, they, they were a new revelation, uh, to uh, to to a degree, or essentially to the understanding of the average American, you follow me. Uh, there was a move of the spirit in these environments. Uh, you know, the Anabaptists, Methodists that came from Wesleyanism, uh, and and this thing was attractive to the slave. Why? Because it pointed to who they were anyway. See, that's extremely powerful. Another thing that became uh, that that we got to realize is that. This thing didn't just start in the Americas. This was a mindset that was cultivated in the European. You feel me? All the way back to Catholicism owning Christianity as its national religion. That, that's not because all of the Romans were proselytized or had a revelation of who God was. It was a political move that was about control. And that's huge because then the dynamics of how people believed God totally changed. In the New Testament church that centered around Northern Africa, which you now call Middle East, glory to God, <laughs> praise God. <laughs> right. You know, that's funny to me all by itself. But, but in that idea, the revelation of the Christ is what led people to be proselytized. Right. By the time we get into Roman Catholicism in the third and fourth century, as it starts really shifting uh, uh, north uh, that away, there was a mindset of now it's not about the revelation. It's about someone being convinced of truth. So God wasn't revealing himself to people, which was the, the design right now. It's man articulating arguments to see someone saved. You see a big difference compartmentalized Christianity didn't even exist as long as the scriptures was in Northern Africa. <laughs> you feel me? In the New Testament church, it was about relationship. This compartmentalized attitude was taken on once Catholicism captured a hold of it. Now, because of that, that moment, the whole idea of Christianity takes on an imperialistic mindset, right? And that's huge. That's huge. You Go just forward a, a few hundred years, praise God, and that's a major split between what we understand now in the history, the East and the West. You feel me? The ideology that American Christianity comes under is a Western thought. The Eastern thought was a more African, more relational base idea. You, you follow me? If we fast forward a few hundred years, then we see ideas like doctrines of discovery, just war theory. Until we get almost in the United States, and then we see manifest destiny. And so now there is an ownership of European culture that feels that they're now a part of God's chosen people. <laughs> to the extent that now all of the characters in Scripture now have their identity. This is where we get a white Jesus from. Are you with me? To the extent that Adam and Eve now is white. But scientists have long since proven that all life started in Africa. So you got to see these subtleties and how they, how they begin to shift and how this superiority is being taken on. Now they justify being able to go in and, and literally annihilate cultures in the name of God. See, this is where all of it birthed. And by the time you get into the United States, and I'm giving you all a very short version of this, but by the time you get into the United States, it's now the dominant thought. So when we start uh, really considering what it is to reteach our brothers, there is an assimilation that most blacks fall under, right, that literally causes them to be inauthentic in their identity. You got to hear me. This is powerful. So how do you have relationship with people who are inauthentic to themselves? You can't. It's not real relationship. So then the identity piece becomes inc incredibly valuable. Right. You, 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 see, you see how powerful this really becomes? You, you follow me? So, and, 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 um, and me and my brother, we, we've talked about this so much. It's, it's crazy. But one of the things that, we sh that we've seen that people struggle with is that when they become Hebrew, and I use that word more so than Israelite, but when they become Hebrew, 
uh, uh, praise God, then they take on this, these, this, this attitude of superiority. Love and superiority cannot coexist. If you're going to operate in agape love, praise God, then you're going to have to drop superiority. You feel me? Uh, another thing is, it, that's really important to understand, the problem has never been the law. That's right. That's right. The problem is our inability to keep the law without God. Yes. Right? That's right? Now, And this is huge. This is huge. There is no debate between law and grace. There is a deba debate between legalism and grace. That's right. Because the law does not have the ability to save you. It can never solve the problem of actually being reconciled to God. You, you see how powerful this really becomes? And the, these are the major tenets. So when I see, uh, you know, Hebrew brothers and different things and we get a chance to chop it up, you know, if you're operating from legalism, what are you going to do with the Christ? If you're operating from legalism, what are you going to do with love? You feel me? And these are major points in the scripture. You, 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 you follow me? Yeah, I wanted to say something in reference to Catholicism, which um, the etymology for that is universal or universalism. So the premise or the motive of Catholicism was to take our culture and turn it into a cult and not to cultivate. We're to be cultivated through the law through the love of God and the relationship of God. And what's happened is things have been made into a cult. That's why you have people who don't care, um, you know, who are in politics, right? And they just go haphazardly, I'm going to vote Republican because I, you know, I think I'm a Christian, right? Christianity is a cult in a sense. That's right. That's right. That's right. Keep talking. I mean, I'm are, you, are you just going to drop the mic? Just leave us hanging. He just... He just dropped the mic after that and walked off. But deal with the, 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 the clone, the cult of behavior that keeps people's individuality stifled. Right. right, the premise is right, to, to make everyone robots. Come on. Right, so if, I, so if I can make you a clone or a robot, then you can be controlled. Right? Th that, that's the reason why uh, individuality is fought against so tough, especially in our culture. We're, we're, we're um, what's the word, stereotyped into so many different things. In American culture, we're, we're put into these groups, and then people automatically stereotype and say, you this and you that. And then we've taken and, and, and indoctrinated ourselves, to a sense, to agree with that when the word says something different. Well, you got to think about how God showed his covenant through that of a rainbow. There's various colors. Even though there's rain droplets that are the same, when the prism of light shoots through that thing, then you see the different perspectives. God is a very specific God. So that's why he made us the way he made us. That's why he gave us our language. I don't want to go into that. But it was stripped from us. That's why we, we've, we've taken on a lot of these things that are really pagan. Even the days of our week are pagan. Moon's Day. Thor's Day. Come on, Saturn Day, Saturnalia. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, like, just talk about the term of clone. I know your brother got a question over there. It's like we were talking about the, the term clone, and we've heard this this weekend. Oh, yeah. And I think that this, I think that this is nothing but the Holy Spirit of Ruach being able to, to, Try to try to get us to understand yes, that I don't need you to be like somebody else. I need you to be you. That's right. That's right. This is why I laugh when folks tell us that boom, we're not Israelite enough. Oh, no. <laughs> you don't look like an Israelite. <laughs> right? My real question is the Bible don't tell me to look like an Israelite. That's it right. tells me to look like the Christ. Come on. <laughs> That's, right. that's, that's what I'm trying to figure out. I'm resolved at being an Israelite. I don't need, listen, I could. Morris Sally, he makes shirts. He puts stuff. If I really want, I can walk around with a shirt on that say, you know I'm an Israelite, don't you? Mm. I can do that every day. I can have a different color for every different day. But you know, I'm so resolved in my truth of who I am at boom, at boom, all of our congregation. We don't even talk about being Israelites. No, we really don't. <laughs> when, when the last time we ever had a conversation about that? Right. Listen, 
We've been around, what, it's four years since we started the ministry? Four years? Almost four years. Almost four years. I probably taught two lessons on we, the people of the book. I'm serious. Most of most of them, like Deke here and, and 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 Elder, they was with me when I was bef- when I was doing evangelism work, yep. traveling. Maury was tra- traveling different states and stuff like that, teaching in in um, in hotel conference rooms. I did more teaching about who we were as a people, all because I was teaching against Kemet. Right. I was teaching against Kemet. And then I got invited in churches because I had relationship with pastors. I would teach against Kimmick. But then when we start getting down to the point of, of who we are, right. because if the belief is that we are descended from Ham. Yeah. So once you start debunking that, then the next question is, well, who are we? Right. <laughs> that opened the door organically. Right. It wasn't about me trying to prove to you that you was a Hebrew. I already knew I was a Hebrew when I was showing up at, on Sunday after flying in from teaching other people that was Hebrews. Oh. I went to church on Sunday, still doing my due diligence, never challenged my pastor, anything, any of that. When I started out pastoring, it was because my pastor told me that I'm not going with them with the transition He to another, to the, another location. He said, your buck stops here. You're going to pastor the Hebrews. So I didn't have a bad Christian experience. Neither did I have a pastor hating on me. He pushed me into the in, into into my destiny. So the thing is that I don't get this thing about you're not Hebrew what, what, or you too Christian. What a Christian look! You sound like a Christian. What what does a Christian sound like? I'm I'm serious, Pastor. What a Christian sound like? You, you, if it wasn't in the Bible, you can find Christian about. Of course, the modern translations you find Christian there. But they were known as Messianic or Nazarenes. The way. People of the way. I'm trying to figure out what, what, what is that? I guess they told Christ, you don't sound like a Pharisee. Mm-hmm. Yep, they did. They I'm going to end right there. Go, go ahead, brother. Ask your question. Yeah, go ahead with the question. <laughs> oh, Lord. This junk here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let, let me make mine first. I, I believe they can. I believe they can. I know there's people that preach opposite that or other than that, but I believe that they can teach the scriptures properly as God, you know, sets them, sets them forth through truth. You want to ask that? Hey, he, um, he spoke through other Gentiles. They received the Holy Spirit too, so I would say yes. Yeah, so it ain't just for us as a people to teach the word. He said his, na- his word should go out through the nations. So it, even though he dropped his spirit in them, it still came back to them recognizing who one, one another was. Yeah, so yeah, it's, it's all the same. Um, and um, this is a, another point like um, that I just thought about because a lot of people... Um, this question comes up like as far as like the infi- us people as Hebrew being inferior um, he said the greatest among you should be a servant so that should take away that whole complex right there of, infer- um, of you being better than what you are you should lower yourself to be a servant um, yeah absolutely boils down to motives but um, another point I wanted to say with, as far as going back to that question, um, dealing with us as being Hebrew Israelite, you got to understand anybody who accepts Christ is a Hebrew Israelite. So it's not just about us as a people, but those who are grafted in. They left out of Egypt and all the other lands in the multitude. So those who took on him and took on his ways were also considered one as him. So that in in fact would come back you had proselytes um in the book of acts which which were gentiles so yeah and they was converted so so once you be converted and you become one of us yes you are able to teach the word of yah absolutely (laughs) Uh, i would have to concur to to the panel uh you see that in various uh 
throughout scripture. You see it with, uh, even with leading the people with Joshua and Caleb. Uh, Caleb not being an Israelite, him, he not having a drop of Israelite blood in him, but he was paired with Joshua to lead the people. In, exactly, he had the most faith among Israel. I mean, well, of course, among them, but out of them, they look to him and see that this is the person that has the most faith amongst us. Um, also, you see Timothy. Timothy, uh, he was not an, uh, he was, well, he had an Israelite mother, but his father uh, was not of Israelite uh, descent. Now, a lot of Israelites deal with the, uh, the, 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 the lineage of the, the seed going through the father. So if now if you're saying the lineage goes through the father blood, that's that determines who you are as being an Israelite. Well, his father was not an Israelite, but yet Timothy was yet a preacher of the gospel. He taught people. So you see various instances in the Bible where the, where the father literally expounds on uh, he is no respect of persons. When you have a heart for the most high and to do his will, he choose whomever he will. He prefer he want to use his people Israel, but guess what? Israel, what, what's been our history? Uh, Stiff neck, a rebellious people. He even said in Deuteronomy uh, uh, thirty-two that he would uh, 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 vex us and bring us to uh, jealousy with a re with a foolish nation of people. Come on now, we got to get in the script. So the very thing we're being vexed now. Now we want to. Now we want to try to. Eli, I've been trying to get you to do this the whole time. Now you want to come back. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't vex you now. Now you're getting killed in the street. Now you're getting misappropriated. Now you, you're losing your children. Now you, why, Lord? Why? Now you want to turn to me now. I ain't going to preach. Go ahead. You truly want me to answer this question? Well, the reason why I ask is because a lot of people that are new into the faith, yes, that might be something that they hear online saying that a white man can teach it. Yes, yes, it's an excellent question, and I think it's, it's a great question for everybody here and online. But the question is, can a white man or a white person teach an Israelite or a, a black shit they be teaching, period. Right? Now, I think the, the instance where the question is on, can they preach and teach the truth? Can they preach and teach the you truth? Know, from the revelation that we're seeking as today. Okay. No. And here's why. No if you're under the Levitical priesthood. <laughs> but the problem is we're under the Melchizedek priesthood and under Melchizedek Paul said there's neither Jew nor Greek there's neither bond nor free see once you discover that the priesthood that we're under is greater than what's on the earth this is the reason why the Hebrew writer said that if Yeshua had come through and was being qualified by the priesthood that's on the earth he could not be a priest because he's of the tribe of Judah. So here's the thing. Even under Levitical priesthood, if you ain't of Levi, you can't teach. So all these folks running around, I'm from the tribe of Judah, but they teaching. And they say they under Levi. So you still in error. And here's another error. You can't say that you're from Judah and you don't like to worship. You can't. You don't even want to praise and worship. You call that Christian. So I know you ain't of Judah. You of Manasseh. <laughs> Nephthali. Claim somebody else. Stop claiming Judah, please. Judah, in fact, before we even went to battle, the Judites have to go out to worship. How you got... How you tell my, you fight, let, let's go fight the, the white man, let's go fight our oppressors, and y'all fighting without worship. How? You fight without worship. We're going to fight, we're going to teach them the truth through the scriptures. You, first of all, you're going into spiritual warfare 
without worship. Let me say this. I'm going to get back to the point because I, got, I, got, I just got to stay here, though. We have the walls of Jericho on our minds. Our minds say this Jericho. Impenetrable walls. Right? We can't reach our family because we're trying to reach them with the word and not worship. The Pharisees should have already been doing what the Christ, when he came, when he came into earth, they should have already been doing it. That's right. It should have been deliverance and all that stuff. How was it word it took him to come down for a man to pull up a Bethesda to be healed, but these brothers will be teaching every day. You know why? They teaching and studying the word with no worship. Now, is that lifting your hands? No. Is that doing it before service? No. Now, let me get back to the point. Omar Obadiah brought up about Caleb. He was listed under the house of Jericho. But we know that his father was an Edomite. Right? But yet, he was found to have more faith than even Joshua when it came down to trust in the word that was given to Moses. And he wasn't a white man. The traditional Edomites were black folks. Matter of fact, some of them are still in Africa today. Right? So, the Most High, and the Elder talked about proselytes. A proselyte is one who has a full conversion. They walk, talk, everything they do is like Israel, which means they have the same benefits. So if they can go into the inner courts of the temple, because it was forbidden for Gentiles to go into the inner courts of the temple, but a proselyte could go into the inner courts. If a proselyte could go into the inner courts, then he got access to teach. He got authority to teach. He's an Israelite. And that's what the Torah says. It says one law has been given. One. You know why the most I said that? Because Israel was probably was getting arrogant. Yeah, y'all, y'all, y'all came out of Egypt with us, but y'all ain't on our level. Most I said, no, one law is given. You're not to call them your Gentile brother when they convert. You call them your brother. Right? All right, I I, I end right there. I ain't gonna go too much further. What's the color of peanuts? Let me let me say this. Um, <laughs> and here's is a very key point, uh, and it also becomes a point um, that I addressed in the conversation. Most people live their relationship with God and never truly seek to know the mind of God. Never. They stay in the condition of fallen nature through their own logic and reasoning. Proof. God was never racist. He was jealous and he was territorial because of the safety of his people, not because he had a problem with someone else's color. Now, that's huge. God is never racist. So we bring these arguments to the table that never were a part of God's conversation. The reason why God had a chosen people, praise God, is because he wanted to maintain the continuity of his truth through a group. The goal was always to redeem the whole. That was always the goal. Again, a lot of people's effort is to try to take Christ out of an equation. But what we forget is in Ephesians chapter 2, the scriptures literally tell us that Christ died for unity. Literally, he died for unity. I don't know why we have these dumb arguments. You know, the reality of it is he said he died to make two people one. <laughs> right? And the two people was literally Jew Gentile, <laughs> you, you, you feel me? So we have these arguments based out of our logic and reasoning, not because we're really trying to see it like God sees it. One of, we, we, there's something else we talk about all the time. The struggle with most, most people and the reason why they ch chase uh, these para-religious consciousness like Hermeticism, uh, Hebrew, uh, Israelites, uh, uh, um, Islam, all these ideas is because they're not healed. They still have a lot of unforgiveness in their heart, and they're trying to pacify their unforgiveness versus really growing their intimacy with God. That's huge. 
<laughs> I, mean, I promise you this. And even in trying to have intimacy with God and in relationship with God, if you try to do it with a, a hindered heart, unforgiveness, praise God, you have a functional thing but a limited thing. You got to remember that. That's, that's huge. Praise God. And so just to bring it back to the point, God's goal was always redemption. His goal was always redemption. And not one time in scripture was, was his goal not redemption. <laughs> you, you feel me? And, and we forget that, though. We, 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 we lose that somehow when we start having these, these, these crazy arguments. Amen? We can, um, we can close out, though, and go eat if y'all ready. Y'all ready to go eat? Praise, praise God. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us. Uh, thank our Moray, our bishops. Praise God. A great man. Um, you know, for participating in our panel. I, I pray. Um, um, it, it, does any guy, anybody got any closing words they want to say? Yes, I got some closing words. Thank my, my beautiful wife. Where she's sitting over there. She's looking so beautiful. She, she, she wearing that head wrap because she want to. It's not because I made her. And it ain't no law for it. <laughs> so, thank you. Thank you, Pastor Sebastian Holler. That's my brother. Thank you for having us and having an awesome car. This won't be the last one. We're going to get together and do some more. <laughs>